Hello, I'm Mimi, and this is part two of our augmented reality series where my partner and I show you how we make the augmented reality art reels that we've been sharing on Instagram lately. Today we're going to teach you how we use Adobe After Effects to bring my illustrations to life in the real world, but if you haven't watched part one yet, then jump on over to my last video to learn how to prep your art and use the Adobe Aero app for a quick and easy way to do AR. If you enjoy this video and want to see more, please consider subscribing and liking the video as it really does have a big impact on the channel. So my partner Dan is the wizard who makes the videos here and I've asked him to show me his After Effects process so I can teach it to you. Strap yourselves in because there's a lot to unpack, but feel free to pause and rewatch when things are moving fast and I'll leave a link in the description to the artwork and footage we used so if you like, you can use the same assets and follow along. So let's see how it works. The general concept of what we're getting the software to do in this tutorial is to place a digital object in a 3D virtual space and make a digital camera movement around that object that mimics the exact real camera movement we did with footage we filmed. That way when you put them together they look like they were made together. So first you need to film the footage you'll be inserting your art into. Have a think about a flat surface where you want your art to be placed in AR and film a simple camera movement of that setting in good lighting. To make things a little easier later on, you could consider putting a flat object in your scene where you want your art to be placed, like we have with this doily. We'll import that footage into After Effects by double clicking in the project window and navigating to your file. Make sure Import As is set as Footage. Now click and drag the video file down to the New Composition button to create our base composition, which is where we'll be adding all our layers and effects. The setting we've filmed for this tutorial is a desk with a lamp in the foreground and a doily where I want the art to be placed. Now we need After Effects to understand the footage we've filmed so it can mimic the camera movements we did and understand where our desk surface is. So let's create our 3D camera tracker. With your video layer selected, click the tracker tab and select track camera. In the effect control tab on the left of your screen, you can see that After Effects is starting the tracking process. This can take a little while depending on the video footage and how fast your computer is. Once that's finished doing its thing, you can see all the little colorful track markers After Effects has placed on the footage. It's basically made itself a virtual map of how the pixels in the footage have moved and then allocated coordinate data to certain tracking markers. We can use these markers to tell After Effects where the virtual ground plane is, which we want to be our desk surface, and then to generate the virtual camera movement. So let's start by making sure the video layer and 3D camera tracker effect are selected and then draw a selection around some track markers where you want your art to be placed. I want the art to be on the doily so by lassoing those markers, After Effects will generate a ground plane based on the average of these points. It'll show you a circular target to demonstrate the orientation of the surface. If yours looks incorrect, try again with different track markers or select markers individually until you find a plane that looks right. Once you're happy, right click and select set ground plane and origin to make this the center of our 3D space. Right click again and select create shadow catcher, camera and light. For the purpose of this tutorial, we're not going to be using the shadow catcher and the light, but it is an easy way to bring in those elements if you do want to play around with them. Now you can see that After Effects has generated three layers, a light, the shadow catcher and the 3D tracker camera. So now we're ready to bring in our artwork. So import your PSD by double clicking in the project window and navigating to your file. Make sure import as is set as composition retain layer sizes and the layer options are set as merge layer styles into footage. Click and drag the imported art down to the current composition and place it on top of all the other layers. Next, select the pan behind tool and move the anchor point from the center of the layer to the bottom of the artwork. This is important as it will make sure any movement or scaling happens from the base of the art. So we want to change the art layer type to 3D. You can see it's now placed in our scene, but not on the doily yet. And don't worry that it's black, that's just because we didn't disable the lighting just yet when we filmed the tutorial, but you can do that really easily by just hiding the visibility of the lighting layer. Now we're going to anchor the artwork to our desk surface. So open the position data by either pressing P on the keyboard, or you can also get there by clicking the drop down tab at the side of the layer and opening transform. Set the position to be zero, zero, zero. This will place the art layer on the doily because we've already told After Effects that this is the origin and our ground plane. We can play around with the scale, position and rotation of the layer to adjust it to be the size we want. 
Pressing S on the keyboard will open the scale option, R for rotation and P for position. This is where we turned off our light layer so now you can see the artwork. Our art is now placed in our scene and is looking pretty good. Next we are going to edit the art and because the art layer is itself a composition within our main composition, it'll be so much easier if we can see them both simultaneously. So let's change our screen layout to see both and to do this, left click on the composition name on the top tab and select new comp viewer. Double click on the art composition layer to open it and now we can see both compositions as we work. Select all layers in your art composition by shift clicking on them or selecting Ctrl A and change their layer type to 3D. Now open the main composition again and click the collapse transformations box. This means that the position data of the layers inside that composition are referenced in this composition. It sounds confusing, but it does help with the workflow. So the next step is to distribute the art layers on the Z axis to show off the depth of our scene. Select the first layer in your art composition, press P to open up the position data like we did before, and click and drag the Z data to the right and left. You can see our layer moving forwards and backwards in the scene. We're going to set this foreground layer at minus 1000 and add 100 to each layer below. So layer two will be minus 900 and so on. This will evenly distribute the layers in our scene, but play around with the numbers that work for you and your art. Now we can't quite see everything in our main art view anymore. So on the toolbar, select dolly towards and click and drag the scene so we can see everything again. Much better. You can see the master preview on the right is looking pretty good now with all the layers separated. I think we want the signature to be framed nicely at the end for this one, so let's change this position to look a little better. And there we go. So we're going to add some animation now, and this is where After Effects really differs from Aero and lets you have more control over the movement and character of your art. Let's start with some simple animation of the sparkles and hearts by scaling them up and down like they're pulsing. To do that, we'll select this heart layer and zoom into it so we can see what we're doing. Navigate to the effects and presets panel and select the effect called wiggle scale and drag and drop it onto the heart layer. If we hit play, you can see it animating with the default settings and they're not quite how we want them. So over in the effects controls, we're going to untick wiggle width separately and increase the scale amount to 100%. Now the heart scales up and down from zero to 100%. Perfect. Let's copy and paste this effect to all sparkle and heart layers so they all have the same effect. To do that, open up the layer, open effects, and select both effects and Ctrl C to copy. Then select all other sparkle and heart layers and Ctrl V to paste them in place. If we play it through back in the main composition, we can see how sweet they all look now. So let's then play around with the placement of some of the sparkles and hearts to bring more depth into the scene. Have a play around yourself with your layers to see what the scene looks like with the layers close to camera or far away in the background. It's a creative process, so have fun with it. Time to animate our three flower characters. There are lots of ways you can animate in After Effects and normally we use a mix of effects, but one of the easiest ones to utilize is the puppet pin tool. It lets us warp the image and keyframe its movement. So with our poppy layer and puppet pin tool selected, let's add a pin at the very bottom, middle and very top of the character art. Then on the poppy layer, press U to bring up keyframes, select pin three, which is the third pin we placed on the character, alt click on the stopwatch and in the expression panel, type wiggle, open bracket, one comma 80 and then close bracket. That tells our pin to randomly wiggle 80 pixels every one second. It's such an easy way to bring layers to life with organic movement. We're going to repeat those steps with our next character layer. So select the layer, click on the puppet pin tool, pin the bottom, middle and top, alt click on pin three and type in the wiggle expression again. Perfect. Now we want a little more control with the final character so that we can have them sleeping and only rising up and down slowly rather than having the wiggle. So we'll repeat the first steps again with the puppet pin tool, but instead of adding wiggle, we're going to add a keyframe one second into the scene and move the character's head up. So select pin three and make sure your timeline is one second into the scene. Click and drag pin three up a little bit.
Then because we want it to loop, we'll just copy the starting position keyframe and paste it at the two second mark. Now we have a little loop. It's a little stilted, so let's select those three keyframes. Right click on one, go down to keyframe assistant and select easy ease. That'll give some smoothing to the movement of each keyframe. Much better. Let's select all three keyframes and copy and paste them down the timeline to loop the animation. Looping can be done in more efficient ways, but for this tutorial, copy and pasting will do just fine. Lovely, let's preview that pack in our main composition and I think the animation is complete. Okay, on to masking. Masking is one of the most powerful tools in making your scene feel real because it can put your art behind objects in the real world. It can be achieved in many different ways in After Effects. For this tutorial, we'll simply be putting a shape layer as a track mat, which we'll explain in a little bit. To maintain the illusion that our digital art is on our desk, we need to make sure we don't see the poppies in front of the foreground lamp. So we'll be recreating the shape of the lamp as a mask to hide any artwork behind it. Since we already have camera data tracked for this footage, we can use that to help us make our mask fit in the scene. Select the video layer, also select the 3D camera tracker from the effects controls and find a track marker that is connected to your foreground object. For our lamp, this one looks pretty good. Right click and select create null. Now we have a null layer, which is like an invisible layer that holds data. And we're using it to take the position data of the lampshade, which we will use soon. Make sure you have deselected all layers, then select the pen tool from the toolbar. Use the pen to create a shape layer that traces the shape of your foreground object. And then use the pen behind tool to move the anchor point to as close to your null object as possible. Change that shape layer to be a 3D layer so it's now being tracked in the scene. You can see it's in the wrong place. So using the position data from the null layer, copy and paste it to the shape layer and adjust the scaling so that it looks about right. Now you can see it's tracking nicely at the right position but doesn't mask the lampshade when the perspective changes. Let's delete the null layer as we don't need it anymore. And then on the shape layer, click on the drop down and select contents, then shape, then path, and click the stopwatch to create a keyframe. Let's also drop the opacity here so we can see the background as we work. Now the mask doesn't have to last the entire composition as the lamp is out of frame after a little while. So we can trim the length of the shape layer so it's only visible when needed. So we have a keyframe at the start, which is pretty accurate, but now we need to evolve the shape to match the lamp's perspective change. It's as simple as starting from the end and working our way backwards, adjusting the shape's path with the pen tool to match it. You can add as many or as few keyframes as you need in this step. Now let's turn on the poppies again and turn the opacity of the shape layer back to 100% and preview the mask. It looks good, but we can still see the shape because it isn't actually a mask yet. So with the poppy layer selected, click the toggle switch slash modes button and select alpha inverted matte from the track matte drop down box. This will turn off the visibility of the shape and if the poppies artwork intersects with the shape layer, they won't be visible. It's basically an invisibility cloak. So our mask is done, except it looks a little sharp. So let's soften the edges of the mask by going to effects and presets, typing Gaussian blur and then dragging that onto the shape layer and increase the blur until the mask looks more natural. Our final touch will be to turn on motion blur on all of the poppies layers and the mask layer. And I think it's complete. So let's export this for Instagram by navigating to composition, selecting add to render queue, or by pressing control M. 
In the output module, we use QuickTime ProRes 422. Now we can just select where we want it to save and click render. We need to make the file smaller now to be able to upload it to Instagram. We do that by dropping the file into media encoder and exporting in H.264 at around 10 megabit. Now it's ready to upload. So that's our After Effects augmented reality process. Well done if you made it this far. There's a lot to understand, which is why I let Dan deal with After Effects. But I hope that some of you found this helpful, especially if you already have a little experience in After Effects. I'm going to leave a link to the artwork and footage we used for this tutorial in the description below if you want to follow along with the exact same assets that we used. And remember, there's an app that will do a lot of this, excluding the animating and masking. So check out our last video on Adobe Aero to make simplified augmented reality videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.